hi guys so this is the next video in the chapter 12 series so today we will be looking into concepts to be considered at successful organizing chain of command the unbroken way of the authority from the top management to the first line management of an organization is known as the chain of command unity of command the principle that a certain employee should be responsible for one and only supervisor is known as the unity of command span of control the number of subordinates directly reporting to a particular manager is known as the span of control or span of management the span of control can be categorized as narrow and wide authority the legitimate power that a manager of an organization receives for operating various functions for commanding or for distributing the resources is known as authority power the formal authority received by an individual in accordance with his status or the position and in addition the abilities received through other ways are also known as power there are several sources of power legitimate power received on the position this is also known as authority power expert power reward power cohesive power preferent power while the sources of power that an individual especially a manager receives can be depicted as above some experts believe that those sources of power can be classified into two that is the power received on the post and the power received on the person they say that legitimate power cohesive power depends on the post and other sources of power depends on the person based on the way that authority is vested organizations can be recognized as centralized or decentralized centralization when all decision making power is centered with the top management of the firm decentralization and in decentralization decision making power is spread from top to all levels of the management of the firm now let's look into the advantages and disadvantages of centralization decision making becomes faster having a unity in decision making control is easy communication becomes easy costs can be reduced limitations difficulty in executing the decisions because decisions taken may not have considered what would be achievable in lower level of management employees may not be motivated since they are not a part of the decision making because of that their dissatisfaction would be increased now let's look into few advantages and disadvantages of decentralization advantages of decentralization the duty of top management being reduced ability to implement decisions easily subordinates become developed due to providing them with decision making power because of that employees motivation and satisfaction being increased limitations decision making becomes late due to involvement of many people in the process and different people might have different opinions resulting in a time consuming process of convincing everyone to agree on a common term thus resulting in high cost for the company organizational structure organizational structure is the way that the post tasks authority responsibilities and accountability are distributed and coordinated now let's look into the principles under an organizational structure unity of command chain of command span of control centralization or decentralization job specialization rules and procedures coordination the hierarchy organizational chart the chart that depicts the way that various departments or functions are divided is known as organizational chart now let's look into the types of organizational charts horizontal chart vertical organizational chart circular organizational chart to the way that the post 
functions, authority and responsibilities of a formal organization are distributed can be depicted in a formal organizational structure and in an organizational chart. The informal organization's relationship within the organization cannot be depicted that way. Informal organizations are some formations that are automatically created within the formal organizations based on the interrelationship among the members of an organization and on common needs of them. While these are also known as informal groups, few members of formal groups may also belong to this. The managers should acknowledge that the informal organizations are generated from within the formal organizations and their functioning course for the existence and the development of the organization. Therefore, the arms of informal organizations and the way they are related to the arms of formal organization should be looked into. So that's it with this video guys. Please do like and share to learn and let others learn. Thank you. Created using Powtoon.